This section is called Empirical Formula from Analysis, and it's probably the heaviest math section we've had so far. So what is an empirical formula? It's the smallest whole number ratio of atoms, and it's determined from mass percent data. So the problem we have to illustrate, it says we have 69.6% .6 manganese and 30.4% oxygen. We are going to assume that we have a 100 gram sample. So that 69.4%, it becomes 69.4 grams. We look on the periodic table to find the molecular weight of manganese, which is 54.94. We come up with a number of 1.267 moles of manganese. We will do the same thing for oxygen. That 30.4% is 30.4 grams. We look on the periodic table for the molecular mass of one oxygen atom, which is 16.00 grams, and we come up 900 moles of oxygen. So we've got our values of moles, and what we wanna do is divide it by the smallest number. Easier to show than to keep talking. For my manganese, I have 1.26 I divide it by 1.26 and I come up with the value of one. For oxygen, I have 1.900, I divide by 1.26 and I come up with the number 1.49. Now it says, if necessary, convert to whole numbers. Well, we can turn 1.49 into a whole number three by multiplying by two. We need to do the same thing for manganese, and we will come up with MN2O3. Think back to chapter two. The common oxidation state of oxygen is minus two, so this formula does make sense. One point. So what do we have for a molecular formula? Well, that's the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a molecule. And the example I have is vitamin C. There is its chemical structure. You'll learn about the bonds in chapters eight and nine. They tell us that the molecular weight, it's not the empirical weight, it is the molecular weight is 176. What is the molecular formula? Well, I kind of worked ahead and put down all the numbers I need to get started. I will take three times the number of carbons, giving me 36.03. I will take four times the number of hydrogens, giving me 4.032. And I will take three times the number of oxygen, which will be 48.00. When I add them together, I get 88.06 as the empirical formula, or the um, empirical formula, or yes, it's the empirical formula, that's what it is. In order to find my molecular formula, I will take my molecular weight, and I will divide that by my empirical weight or the formula weight, whatever way you want to think about it. I'll just be honest. If you have two different numbers, the larger number usually goes on top, the smaller number goes on the bottom, and what we see is there is a factor of two. That means we need to take C3H4O3 and we need to multiply it by two to get a C6H8O6. That's really why I put the formula here so that as we move on in chemistry, you'll see the relationship between a molecular formula and the actual molecule. Now again, lots of math in this section. I wanna show one more example of a finding a formula, and this combines both. You've got your percentages given, and you also have been given a molecular weight. What you'll have to find first is the empirical formula. And normally I would write this down, but it takes a long time. So what I did is I set things up. I'm doing what we did in the first problem. I'm taking the percent, multiplying by the moles per gram. I come up with my moles of carbon. 
Then what I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing for hydrogen to come up with 1.657 moles of hydrogen. And finally for the chlorine, 1.596 moles of the chlorine. Now, to keep things rolling along, what I'm going to do is divide by the smallest number, which is 1.596, just what we did in the last problem. So what we are doing here is divide by the smallest number of moles. And it's a procedure, it's a method. We will come up with 2.07 for carbon, 1.04 for hydrogen, and one for chlorine. So we'll do the same thing we did in the other problems. We'll say C2HCl. That is the empirical formula. So we want to find out what is the actual molecular formula. Moving on to a next slide. We have to find the formula weight of C2HCl. And again, it's also known as the empirical weight. We'll take two carbons, we'll take one hydrogen, we'll take one chlorine. So I've worked my numbers out here and I come up with an empirical weight of 60.478. What I will do is I will take the molecular weight I was given in this problem 181.4 and divide it by 60.478. We're really looking for whole numbers, so we will call that a 3. So that means that our C2HCl needs to be taken three times to give us the molecular formula, which is C6H3Cl3. Expect a problem like this on your midterm. Now, one of the other problems that you will expect to see is a combustion analysis. And I'll explain it the best I can. It's an experimental method, and people use it to determine the empirical formula. It always produces carbon dioxide and water because it is a combustion process. Think back to chapter two. So you put a sample into a furnace, it goes through an absorber, and here we have water and CO2 that we can actually measure. So I always ask this in class, what would you use this for? A molecular compound or an ionic compound? Notice, non-metals are what's coming out, so we would use this for a molecular compound. Now, what is the method? Well, a typical problem looks like this. You obtain a sample weight and it produces carbon dioxide and water. And from that, you can go and find an empirical, and if you have a mass spec, also the mass, the molecular formula. We don't push you that far. So what is the method? You're given carbon as CO2 and hydrogen as water. First thing you're gonna do is find the grams of carbon and find the grams of hydrogen. You're gonna use those two numbers to come up with the grams of oxygen because the sample contains C, H and O. Then you're going to do just what we've done before. Convert all the grams to moles, divide the moles by the smallest number, convert everything to whole numbers. Again, if we were in class, it would cover a blackboard, I could walk around, you could ask questions, we'll try our best here. So what I did is I started the problem. I converted my grams of CO2 by using the percent carbon in CO2 out of carbon dioxide. And when I do that, the value I get for my number is, let's see, I'm looking to make sure I have the right number, 0 0.0521 grams of carbon. I do the same thing for hydrogen. Notice the number two because it is the percent hydrogen in water and there are two hydrogens in water. We come up with 0 0.0131 grams of hydrogen. So that was really our first step. The second step says find your grams of oxygen. 
and we know our sample weight is 0 0.100. We've just found our grams of carbon. We've just found our grams of hydrogen. And what we don't know is our grams of oxygen. So this is really K through 12 math. It is just subtracting things out and we will come up with our grams of oxygen equal 0 0.0348 grams. And that is really step two, finding our grams of oxygen. Again, you will see one of these on your midterm. You wanna make sure you can do this on your own. I normally spend a lot of time in class walking the room, asking questions, helping people out. Can't do that here. Okay, so what, looks, what does this look like now? Well, this looks like step number three and number four. I've taken all those grams of material, I'm using my mass for each atom, and I'm gonna work my numbers out. So what I have here is my moles of carbon is 0 0.00434. My value for hydrogen is 0 0.1299, and my value for oxygen is 0 0.00217. These are my moles, and what I want to do is divide by the smallest number, which is 0, 0, 00217. And I hate to roll through this, but that's just the way when you uh, record, there isn't that time we have in person. So this is really, again, step three. And what we're going to do is get our mole ratio, 1.995 for carbon, 5.972 for hydrogen, and the number one for oxygen. That will give us a C2H6O as our formula. Now, no need to go further because we got whole numbers. Know that on an exam, we've worked it out. You're not gonna get numbers that make no sense. You'll either get numbers that you can multiply by a factor of two or a factor of three. What do I have as my last slide? Oh, the practice midterm questions. So let's be reasonable. Normally students study the weekend before midterm. Maybe you figured out that's not going to work here because this section alone, it usually takes students about three days to really get a grip around it because it's challenging. So please, please ask questions. I realize times are a little bit different now, but I and all of our graduate TAs are here to support you. Please make use of that. We want you to succeed.